Hi everyone, this is The Final Boss, and thanks for coming over. On today's episode, we're gonna talk about cheat codes, killing relationships, and why my desk is still little. Let's get started. Welcome to the show. I am Kyle Bossman, of course. Uh, before we get started, I have to acknowledge uh, this is brick over here. That brick belongs to Nux Jr. You see, last episode I introduced a list of rules that I had to follow in this show, and I, and I broke one of them. I said one of the words that I can't say, and Nux Jr. called me out on it in the comment section. And so, so I guess you get a brick for that. Anyway, this is episode three of The Final Bossman, and before I get locked into doing a list every episode, I thought it'd be neat to switch up the format. So what we're trying today is two stories and one stupid point. Story one, fun in unexpected places. So this first story takes place, I think in 1998 or 99. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a young Kyle Bossman and it's a school night and my dad comes home, he comes home pretty late and he's got some PlayStation games in his hand. Uh, a guy from work was, was selling some PlayStation games, you want any of these? And uh, he, in his hand he's, he's got Moto Racer and he's got NASCAR 98. And if I'm at a, a video game store, there's no way I'm going to pick these two games up. You know, these are, these are games that generally don't interest me. But something about some weird guy pawning off his PlayStation games at work and my dad thinking of me was a really nice feeling. So of course I said, yeah, thanks dad, thanks for these games. <laughs> and they're not great. <laughs> they're pretty boring games. So a really interesting thing about, about video games of this time is when you're, you're bored with it, it's not a, a matter of going to the DLC marketplace and, and finding DLC and, and new levels to add onto it. I would go to CheatCodeCentral.com and see if there are any interesting cheat codes for these games. And NASCAR 98 and Moto Racer have some extremely interesting cheat codes. Moto Racer I'll start with. So looking through the list, there's, there's pretty normal looking cheat codes. Uh, but then there's one called Future Bikes. So I entered in the code at the main menu and there was some sort of indication that it, that it happened. But then when I went to select my motorcycle, uh, nothing had changed. But then when the race started, my motorcycle was not a motorcycle at all, but it was a Star Wars speeder bike. And everyone else had one. Suddenly this is a game about racing speeder bikes. And these are pretty legitimate speeder bikes. They're like two steps away from what could be considered an official speeder bike. And they're too fast. And it becomes like Wipeout, but harder and super fun. The hook of, of Moto Racer is that you have both uh, motorcycles and dirt bikes in the same game, which I guess was appealing at the time. So when you select a, a dirt bike track, your, your dirt bike isn't a dirt bike, but it becomes a hoverboard. You are guys who are racing on hoverboards. This is the best hoverboard racing game I've played to this date. So suck it, Sonic game with hoverboards. And then NASCAR 98. If you, if you look at its cheat codes, a lot of, you know, not great things. There's like, unlock the EA car, all right. But then there's one called paintball mode. You start the race, you press start, and at this menu, you press all of the shoulder buttons and you hear a little indicator. And then when you're back in the race, suddenly your car has the ability to shoot out paintballs. And these paintballs have the power to make all of the competing cars careen out of control. This is the most fun I've ever had with anything NASCAR. What makes it even greater is in first person mode, the driver has the audacity to wave at his opponents <laughs> as he puts their lives in danger. These two cheat codes single-handedly made uninteresting games interesting, and that is why those are my favorite cheat codes of all time. Story two, the moment I changed my mind on linearity. I realize this is kind of unpopular. Uh, I like linearity. I like linear stories. I like Metal Gear Solid and Final Fantasy IX and, and Tomb Raider. I like these games that have a planned arc for your character. I like those things so much that I, I used to be a snob actually about nonlinear stories. I used to think that if you're playing a game where you have choices, you, your story is going to be bad inherently. As a player, 
The choices we make aren't, aren't what is going to benefit the story the most. The choices we make are probably going to be what's going to make our character the most badass. So I felt that way for a long time, and, and the game that changed my mind was Mass Effect 3. Now I, I played all the way through Mass Effect 2, uh, but I never took any of the decisions seriously, any of the options I was given. I, I kind of just always went for what was evil because that was what was going to give me the funniest cutscene and, and give my character's face more lava scars. And I played through most of Mass Effect 3 the this exact same way, but then something really struck me, and that was the moment when Joker, who's Seth Green with big muscles but can't walk, uh, and Edie, the sexy robot, they start showing feelings for each other. It seemed forced. It seemed like the writers were trying to create this cute situation where these two oddballs were finding love in each other and, and that it would be a, a charming thing. And I just thought it was manipulative and nonsensical. And what Mass Effect 3 allowed me to do was not let that relationship happen. ED comes to Commander Shepard and says, I think that I feel love, is that okay? And I was allowed to say, no, don't. Don't fall in love with Joker. Just be a robot and shoot guns. <laughs> and she said, okay. And then there's a scene with Joker where he comes to Commander Shepard and is like, hey, I, I kind of feel like I have feelings for Edie. Uh, she's kind of like the only woman who's ever like really talked to me. And you're allowed to say, no, you can't. I'm sorry. You're the comedic relief of this story and you need to pilot our ship because we're saving the galaxy and you can't have that love with that robot. In most games where you're allowed to make choices, it's generally just things that are going to affect your character. You're joining this clan or this clan, or you're choosing you're going to be a good guy or a bad guy. But Mass Effect 3 in this moment allowed me to make a decision for the story that didn't affect my character at all. Imagine if in watching the final season of Friends, you could reach in and, and talk to Joey and tell him not to confess his love to Rachel. Or imagine if you could kill off Hawkeye in the first five minutes and then watch a movie about the Avengers you actually like. That is something that only video games allow you to do. And I have a dumb, 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 dumb scene from Mass Effect 3 to thank for that. And finally, the stupid point. EA is not the worst company in America. The Consumerist holds this competition every year for the worst company in America. Uh, EA won last year and is looking pretty good to repeat that victory this year. They may have already won by the time this airs, I'm not sure. This list is not to be taken seriously. It's kind of a goof. Uh, in the past, Halliburton has won, but they're not even nominated this year because the consumers realize they'll get more clicks if they allow us to vote for JC Penney or Carnival Cruise Lines than to make it anything political. It's, it's not the worst companies in America. It's the companies in America that irritate us the most. And I don't think that EA even belongs on that list. Let me go back for a sec to my beloved NASCAR 98 and Moto Racer. Their sequels, NASCAR 99 on the PlayStation and, and Moto Racer 2, they did not have feature bikes and they did not have paintball mode. And the reason for that probably is when they were budgeting out these sequels that there is no space and, and time and resources for these neat bonus modes that can't be advertised on the back of a box. And so these cool secrets were a risk back then, but they're even more a financial risk now. Big budget games are so high risk, they're scary. Yeah, EA is this money grubbing worst company, but they're also the publisher of this frivolous game of Mass Effect. There are so many hundreds of cutscenes that I will never see. And all of those had to be written and recorded and tested and paid for by Bioware and EA. And they don't care that I'll never see them. That's kind of the point of their game is to empower the player with all of these choices. And I realize a lot of us hate Mass Effect, the whole series because of the way that Mass Effect 3 ended. And so I think that's the real reason why EA is on this list. It's just this company we're disappointed in. We wanted to love Mass Effect 3. We wanted to love SimCity. We want to love Battlefield 4. Look at that game, it's freaking gorgeous. Our anger comes from this place of, of disappointment, of, of wanting to like what they do. They keep making big mistakes. 
but I don't think that makes them one of the worst companies in America. They are a company that publishes video games that we play for fun. And that's my stupid point. Uh, so that is actually the episode. I should note, uh, just in the spirit of honesty, that uh, both Moto Racer and NASCAR 98 are also published by EA. I didn't know that when I was writing it, but it, it turns out that's the case. So this turned out to be an EA heavy episode. I should also acknowledge what's going on with my desk. Uh, so the big desk did come. Uh, it, it came early one morning and Mike Damiani saw it and he thought it was his. I guess he needed more space for his Zelda figurines or whatever, but um, that's his now. Also, please follow me on Twitter. Two weeks ago, I thought that Twitter would not be very fun, but it's turned out to be kind of fun. You are fun Twitter people. You have interesting comments and questions and compliments. Uh, sometimes I want to tweet thank you to you, but I realize you shouldn't tweet the word just the words thank you. Just know that I am grateful for all the nice things you say and in the comments even. Also, please comment. Comment on this episode. I'm, I'm genuinely curious what you thought of it. If you want lists back, let me know. And also, really quick before I go, I, I want to do a big thank you to two video game stores that had NASCAR 98 and Moto Racer. I traded them in a long time ago and they are kind of hard to find today. So big thanks to a and Games and a big thanks to Gameplay of Culver City area. You helped me out big time. If, if you're lucky enough to have an independent game store around you, uh, help support them because old games are good games. I will see you in two weeks. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hey Mike. Hey, what's up Kyle? I was just not uh, noticing your third desk. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, well, I was, I was wondering if maybe I could have it, please. Mm, no, I don't think so. Please, I just, I like, I just need it for like one hour for my show. No, I need it too. Sorry. What do you need it for? You just have one link bobblehead on it. Hold that thought. See all of our shows and game reviews now on the brand new GT app on Xbox Live and the GT Originals iOS app too.